afternoon. Good afternoon. What is happening? What's happening? <whistles> Try Maximus that berserker. I'm chilling. We're doing the troop. We're doing the troopy. 1989 2H diesel. Got a tiny bit carried away on the installation of the thermostat. Old thermostat there. New thermostat still in the box. I thought, oh, you know. Can't put a new thermostat in a crappy housing, so started doing up the housing. And then, next minute, do up all the bits. Do up all the bits, including the engine. <laughs> yes! Yes, yeah, so, because the 2H is a 4 litre straight 6, it is a barra. <laughs> Uh, two litre to say, four litre, four litre, Barra diesel, this is the diesel, so I'll give it the red, standard they come with the blue, and I've seen a million blue ones already, everyone paints them blue, so i just give it a little tickle, uh, masking tape is for people who don't know how to paint, no, <laughs> it's for people who give a shit, but um, took off this here side cover, and that and sussed out these Welsh plugs. They're pretty cool. They sort of go down in size. The four middle ones there. Rear has no Welsh plug. Middle has whatever size that is. And the front has it fully blocked. So where is that cover? That's over here. I'm going to clean that up later on the wire wheel. Right, it's this one. And it's not too crusty at all. This engine... I don't know, it's kind of a mixed bag, like it's really, really good, but also it's been flogged. But something that was interesting to me at least, maybe not to you, was like it's all, this covers for water, but it also covers oil. The oil filter bolts to this cover, but then you got this unit right here. Like what the heck is this unit? This unit is a oil cooler. All right, so it goes in one end, out the other, obviously. I'm not sure which end is which. Doesn't really matter, but I can show you here how it's like a sandwich. It's two really thin, really wide plates that are sitting in the uh, water jacket. Sitting in the water jacket, so. That's decent. I don't know. That's kind of cool. I sort of like that. Obviously, I'm going to be replacing these here seals. I don't know necessarily exactly O-rings, but I have the seal kit. Uh, what's it called? Gasket kit for the entire engine. So, I haven't looked yet, but I'm going to clean that up more with the wire wheel and stuff. I've got the intake there. I'm going to clean that up got power steering over here, I've got water pump, I've got oil fuel filter, I've got pulleys, I've got EDIC, I'm not sure what EDIC means for, uh, stands for, sorry, <laughs> I think it stands for electric diesel something cut off, intermittent cut off perhaps, someone knows, let me know, and then I've got the front of the timing belt, sorry, the timing cover. Uh, oh, but we have no Tommy belt, which is why I wanted a 2H. Next model, um, so this is the last of a 2H 1989. In the 90s, 91, they brought out the 1HZ, HZ, if you're overseas, 1HZ, Z. It has Tommy belt, and I'm not a fan of Tommy belts after owning multiple. Subarus, climbing belts can EADC. <laughs> so I want one that's all gear driven, which is cool. Um, where are we going to be able to see it? Oh yeah, I suppose so. Maybe. Suss me little light out. Suss me phone camera. See that there, the zero? You can see it's right there. That's part of the timing 
So zero obviously lines up with zero. All of the gears I've taken off are here. Uh, which one is it? Probably runs on this one. Zero to zero. The other side here runs two to two. The uh, diesel injection pump I've got inside out of <laughs> the weather because I've got a tree and the tree is leaving lots of stuff. It's dropping all like it's flowers and leaves and shit all through my freaking engine. <laughs> right, so zero to zero. Uh, what have we got? One to one, I believe. Somewhere else. Two to two. Two to two is on this side of the pulley. Three to three. If you can see here, this is the idler, right? So this idler was on incorrectly. The pulley that it runs, I believe this is the camshaft. I don't really know because <laughs> even though I have the full service manual on the computer, I've not really bothered to look at it, eh? Uh, where is this? There's a three on it. Look, there it is. Whoop, there it is. You can see the three. This has a three on one tooth. This here has a three on two teeth. All right. So obviously the one tooth goes between the two teeth on the three. And that sits over here. Let's focus this camera. That sits right here. You know, I'm going to guess this is the camshaft. And this runs push rods. You got your crankshaft, obviously, is the main thing. Drives all of the others. Idler here. Diesel injection pump there. Idler here. Back to your camshaft. And I would love, love to be able to pull this here crank gear off. But so far, no good. I've even gone bought myself this here blowtorch little bloody I was gonna buy map gas but I seen advertise advertisements advertisements for map gas it was like 35 bucks and then when I go to buy the crap it's friggin like 80 90 dollars not buying that shit so I bought the propane which in Australia I guess it's just called LPG and that there was already like 35 bucks. And it got the crank pulley off, so that's good. But, uh, sorry, the cam pulley, that was already tight. And I tried yanking it. I've got a slide hammer. Shout out to my mate Randall, eh? What a legend. You give me the slide hammer. Got that bit of chain, you sort of bolt it into the bolt holes. Yank on it with a slide hammer. That sort of worked all right for that one and then this one, but the crank pulley, it's only got M6 holes in it, and there's only two. And, yeah, you know, six mil's not that all, not all that good for yanking with the slide hammer. So I've been blasting it with the propane and trying to get it hot before the crank gets hot and rip it off, but... At this point in time, I haven't been able to get that off because I really, really badly want to reseal the timing case, if you'd call it that. I'm not sure what it's called in Toyota speak. I don't know much about Toyotas. Other than, we've painted this bastard red, including all around the um, ports and that, like the studs even. But don't worry, we're going to rip the studs out. We're going to run them on the why wheel clean them up these plates haven't really painted because side plate thing i believe they run into the oil gallery and if they do this is where i need to weld <laughs> welding fuck where's it gone it's gone somewhere Anyway, I've got the fitting. I've got the fitting because I'm going to run the turbo. The turbo runs this side here. I've got, obviously, it's the exhaust. Um, I'm just going to wait and get the bonnet or the hood back on uh, and deck it all out. But firstly, my mate Harmsy. 
Harmsy's Fab, Michael Harmsworth, shout out, is going to modify my intercooler that I bought off eBay. Uh, I've got a nice massive one. It's 300 tall, 600 wide. I believe it's 75 millimeters thick. So it's pretty decent. But it has three inch sort of um, intake hose and they come out like the side sort of thing. And so, because it's 600 wide, it sort of sits like right here. And then when it comes out the side, it's sort of like into the headlight. So, Harmsy Fab is doing me a job of 90 degreeing that. So, it's going to go back through here. And then I'm going to like cut and drill out through here. As opposed to like cutting out this. Trying not to cut out the structural parts. Because police, police are pricks, and they'll bust you for anything. So uh, it's going to be fun. So basically, I guess it sort of starts with the intercooler. Intercooler is going to be number one thing. Obviously, the turbo is another thing completely, and the manifold. I'm going to make all that myself as opposed. <laughs> I paid three hundred bucks. Was it three fifty? I think it is. You can just buy a manifold off some guy who makes them, and I bet they're really good. I'm lucky I can make mine two percent better <laughs> and dick around forever. So I'm doing that, uh, and also I'll get my turbo sitting exactly where I want it. So it's been fun. The old troopy is sort of fun, sort of not. It's it's pretty much a lemon, eh? Do not buy a thrashed four-wheel drive. <laughs> Everyone knows this. I even know this. But, you know, it's exactly what I wanted sort of thing. By the time I rebuild every single mechanical part on it, it's going to be good. There's your standard exhaust. Everything came off on it pretty good. All the studs and that were nice and loose, sort of thing, like undo them and then they're finger tight. Missing one stud for under here, which I suppose they didn't put on because it's sort of hard to get to. And I undid these ones, but I couldn't really get to that one. Shout out to the designers at Toyota. Whoever's building Toyotas or drawing them up. It's definitely... <laughs> I used to complain about Subarus, thinking, oh, they're evil geniuses. Whoever builds, whoever draws up Subarus, they're hard to work on, they're bastards. But, Toyotas, whoever builds and designs Toyotas, are just straight out saddest, eh? Honestly. They like to put parts where there's no possible way to get at them with a decent tool, like we're talking about over here, the exhaust. To get at that, it's sort of sitting like, I guess, sort of right here. So to get your spanner or socket on, you have to go between these two aircon pipes. <laughs> and that, so, that was a lot of fun. Ended up doing it a different way, taking the whole thing out complete. That's why it's chilling over there. With the pipe on it still. Thinking to do a good karma. And if anybody wants 2H standard um, heat shielding, they're in good nick. Too good to throw in the garbage. If anybody wants those, you're welcome to them. Oil filter. Not much to say about that. Really. Alternator. So, diesels. Everyone who's familiar with diesels will know this, but Diesels don't really make suction to run your brake booster. So on the back of your alternator, they run this here. This makes your suction. I haven't opened it up yet exactly to see how it works. I probably should. And you'd imagine that'd be a simple thing, right? So like, just runs, it just makes suction. There's no need to friggin' dick around. Just run this to your brake booster. But nah. No, nah, so it runs to this thing here first. I still haven't really exactly figured out what this is. Again, due to not reading the manual, I probably could read the manual, uh, is a check valve. I don't know if this 
entire unit is a check valve or the check valve is right in here so it sucks on there this bit goes to your brake booster I don't know why it has this some kind of I guess pressure sensor switch maybe you get a brake brake light on your dashboard says you got no brakes well it's a troop carrier land cruiser you got no brakes anyway so that runs that unit it lives here in the corner and it runs into this pipe it runs over there all the way to the bodgy brake booster <laughs> and if this is boosted brakes i'd hate to see them without the boost because the brakes do not work do not work handbrake zero percent actual brakes First pump, 10% maybe, 5% probably, not that good. Second pump, I guess they kind of work 40%, they're not so bad on the second pump of the brakes, but yeah, no, nah, brakes are fucking, fucking terrible, I'll just say it, they're fucking disgraceful on this here troop carrier. Uh, so anyway, I've got to upstairs all the bits, replace all the brakes. Uh, I'm lucky that I live in Rockhampton. There's a company called Braymac. Braymac redo brakes. That's all they do. Uh, they sell a, I think it's the booster. It can fit. Uh, I think it's expensive, but. You get good brakes, but the problem with getting a good booster is that you blow out your rubber lines. So I've got stainless braided lines to go on there. Let's get the brakes after I get the engine, eh? We want it to run good. Turbo's priority. <laughs> we get the turbo on, we we'll get the diff lockers in, and the troopy will be mad later after that. We'll get to the interior. So the interior currently is stripped can see shout out whoever painted the green I believe it's the previous previous owner so young lad that I bought this off so I don't think he did much to it besides flog the piss out of it but yeah the previous owner I think they've did this here green paint they've put lead over any holes in the floor for some reason I guess keep out fumes or whatever so that's good. And then previous, previous, previous owner, whoever w was, painted the white. That lad painted the green. Some lad painted the white. And it's done good. They've gone all up in as far as they could reach with the interior still in while I stripped the interior out. And this is the only patches of rust in the floor right here. So sorry about the terrible lighting but yeah like that's my fingernail and that shit's not bad not bad at all compared to others that I went to inspect ceiling is delicious the roof is not as delicious as the ceiling <laughs> uh. dashboard yeah it's fine standard and then the roof console thing I've taken out already, so. If you've been following at Berserkaroo, you know what's going on with the Troopy. Troopy, we're just giving it a, uh, what do you call it, birthday. We're giving it a love job makeover. Birthday, we're getting 30 more years from the Troopy. <laughs> and if you've watched this video for 20 minutes, and I've talked about sweet F.A., uh, good on you, <laughs> I guess. So, the water jacket is good. I'm going to seal that there back up. I need to buy a sort of stainless um, bolt. Because I kind of like my engines looking nice. You know me. It's Royal Maxim. It's at Berserkaroo. It is the troopy. See you when we're looking at you. Bye-bye.